the geometric distribution of antagonists in any gun battle is a statistically predictable element. The gun cutter treats the gun as a total weapon, each fluid position representing a maximum kill zone, inflicting maximum damage on the maximum number of opponents while keeping the defender clear of the statistically traditional trajectories of return fire. I know a guy. He could get into anywhere. A teleporter? No, he's this fast. You see something strange here? Nothing anybody would believe if you told them. What's up, guys? It's Kitty Jedi from Connery, and I'm sorry my microphone quality is terrible. I've been having a lot of fun mixing the adrenaline pump with CQC combat lately, and decided to make a video to hopefully get more people in on the action. In most cases, an SMG infiltrator with nano weave armor will have more options, but if you really want someone to die quick and quiet and be like, what the heck just killed me? You gotta use a bolt action rifle. The number one question I get when I make a CQC video is, why don't they see you, kitten? My reply to that is, they do see me, and I am getting shot at. These are just clips where I happen to play the odds and win many times in a row. There's two big reasons why most people seem to be ignoring me while I run around. The first reason is because a surprisingly large portion of the player base relies on sound to tell them where the enemies are, and they won't be hearing your shots with a suppressor on, so when there's 50 other allies around them, some infiltrator uncloaking somewhere or a little slash from the knife just doesn't catch most players' interest because they're all hungry for surfs looking at the spawn room and assume the other players will protect them. The second reason is because of the odd way that Planet Side 2 rewards ultra-aggressive tactics. I've always thought the Infiltrator is the strongest anti-infantry class in this game because you can be the best shot in the world and it won't really matter if you're caught off guard. It's true the Heavy technically has the strongest abilities for infantry combat, but the Heavy's ideal situation is to meet one vs one in some open field and outlast an enemy with his skill barrier, but a good infiltrator won't pick a stupid fight like that. They'll be like a despicable ninja. They fight when they know the win or they don't bother fighting at all. Nerve for attack unless you're gonna win. The fastest killstreaks I usually have are with the light assault and the infiltrator because the powerful jetpack and the camo utilities are crucial for catching your opponent by surprise, which is always way more important than some extra defense or firepower. A player who camps in this game can actually be at a disadvantage because everyone in Planet Site 2 is living just a little bit in the past. What I mean by this is the player who sprints into the room will see his opponent roughly half a second before his camping opponent sees him, and if you can get within kissing distance in that amount of time, you can kill the other guy before he even realizes you're in the room. The adrenaline pump sacrifices your nano weave defense for a 10% bonus to your sprint speed, plus it only costs 30 certs and fully certed nano weave will run you over a thousand, so if you're in the bottom 99% you might as well, right? The boost of speed from the pump combined with your invisibility means you'll assassinate people so quickly that even if they see you, they won't have time to react, or they'll react improperly. Against a squad of BR-100 veterans, these techniques probably won't work, but in the big Connery battles where 90% of the people playing are basically a bunch of sheep running around looking at things while the other 10% are dire wolf predators hunting them down and converting them to certs, this can be a useful way to become a wolf in sheep's clothing and claim your share. The more outnumbered you are, the easier it becomes to blend in. Just be sure to prioritize the guys who are standing still, of which there are many on Connery. Don't let anyone tell you it's all luck. It's only as lucky as Texas Hold'em. Sometimes you're gonna get screwed, because that's just poker, but as you play a lot of hands and nudge the odds in your favor, over time you can get a pretty good payout. Of course, this is more for style than anything else, but there are a few specific scenarios where it's actually useful. For instance, say there is a scat max around the corner with an NG repairing him and feeding him ammo while he's blasting away all your teammates. The pump can give you the speed boost you need to dive in there and kill the NG where he thinks he's safe. Then your teammates will hopefully finish off the max. An SMG can take slightly longer to kill than a bolt action. That extra time might be the difference between a dead NG and a live one. I wouldn't really recommend this playstyle if you're trying to have a high KDR. You're going to die pretty often from random unlucky stuff you can't prevent, especially friendly fire. But if you're like me, you aren't happy just getting the kill. You want them to send a tell afterward because they refuse to believe what you did is even possible by a human. 
This playstyle is for the Oberins, the Captain Falcon players, the people who play games not just to win, but to look awesome while doing it. You won't really be equipped to handle every situation the game throws at you, but it's a fun way to challenge yourself if you feel like the game has gotten kind of stale and want to spice it up. I do it because I love feeling like Christian Bale or an X-Men taking on a whole platoon and somehow coming out ahead. No one's ever going to give you a medal for your kill-death ratio, and on Connery, anything's possible, so ditch that SMG and try out your MLG. Unleash your inner ninja and strike from the shadows, not just for the certs, but for the scumbag glory of it. Hope this video makes you want to use the adrenaline pump a little more during your infiltrator shenanigans, and thanks a lot for watching, guys.